This table is very similar to the one that I showed you previously and that I'm demonstrating um, some substrates, some inhibitors, and some inducers of CYP2D6. CYP2D6 is another cytochrome P450 enzyme. It's a bit unique in that it's responsible for the metabolism of approximately 25% of known drugs in xenobiotics. So this makes the CYP2D6 pathway very important in the disposition of drugs in the human body. Now, the list of substrates that I'm including here is actually quite small, as I said before. There are known inhibitors of CYP2D6, and inhibitors, remember, are enzymes, or are substances, excuse me, that interact with the enzyme in such a way that they prevent or inhibit the enzyme from interacting with its substrate, and thus they prevent the metabolism of that substrate. Inducers, on the other hand, interact with the gene that codes for the enzyme molecule, and inducers promote increased synthesis of enzyme molecules by that interaction with the gene and with, at the DNA level. And what we see is that although there are a number of substances that can inhibit the CYP2D6 enzyme, there are very, very few substances that act as inducers. So because of this, we say that CYP2D6 is non-inducible. So the changes that you would see in metabolism that can result because of increased enzyme production actually are not the result of interaction of other substances with the DNA. Having said that, however, there is a large interpatient variability in drug metabolism that is seen among patients. That is to say that there's a wide variety of uh, patients' abilities to metabolize substrates by the CYP2D6 pathway. In the 1970s, as part of a different study that involved pharmacokinetics, it was discovered that th that there was a genetic link between impaired metabolism and adverse effects that were seen in patients. So impaired metabolism was linked to enzyme deficiency. So patients that had impaired metabolism actually were producing less enzyme. By the 1990s, we had new biochemical and molecular biology tools, and so we discovered that there are numerous alleles, or numerous variations in the genes that code for CYP2D6 enzymes. Some alleles are associated with non-functional enzyme, and some alleles are associated with increased enzyme activity. And thus, these variations in genotype can lead to variations in phenotype. Now because CYP2D6 is an important enzyme with respect to the number of drugs that are metabolized here and the fact that it's non-inducible, we would expect this to have clinical implications. And you can see on this chart that there are um, two unique phenotypes or um, expressions of CYP2D6 that can be seen. And so we have some patients that will be classified as poor metabolizers and some patients that will be classified as ultra-rapid metabolizers. And these would be the clinically important ones. We also see that these phenotypes appear to be distributed differently among different populations. So we can see that ultra-rapid phenotypes or patients that are very efficient in metabolizing these substrates by the CYP2D6 pathway tend to be um, predominantly Ethiopian or Spanish in that way. Now this is important clinically also because a poor metabolizer may not be able to effectively metabolize substrate. This can lead to an increase in drug in the body and expose that patient to increased toxicity or at least an exaggerated drug response. Rapid metabolizers may have the opposite problem. Rapid metabolizers may be very efficient in metabolizing the drugs, so efficient that they don't ever get a very good therapeutic response. Additionally, these um, polymorphisms or these multiple forms of these alleles 
are clinically responsible because many drugs that are used, particularly drugs that are used in psychiatry, can act as inhibitors of CYP2D6, which can further confound your patient's response to these medications. Now this next slide that I'm showing is kind of a nice picture that depicts the association between the genotype and the phenotype. And I really want to present this to you in terms of paradigms, paradigms for um, um, individualized medicine. So the current paradigm that we have, um, a drug company will come out with a relatively few number, a small number of dosage forms. And then you choose one of these dosage forms to treat your patients. And I'm sure you probably have seen this in your own clinical practice, that you have some populations that do very well with the dose that's just you've chosen, and some patients that do not do well. Some of these patients that do not do well may either be very sensitive to adverse effects, or they may just not have a very good response at all. This is costly for your patient because this means that you may have to spend more time to change their therapeutic regimen, and it means they may spend more time uh, before they can see an effective therapeutic response. If, however, we understood their genotype and we understood the link between their genotype and their phenotype, then we would be able to identify patients possibly as being either ultra-rapid metabolizers, extensive metabolizers, intermediate metabolizers, or poor metabolizers. And we might further uh, more recognize that ultra-rapid metabolizers may do very well, but they need a higher dose, whereas our poor metabolizers would need a much lower dose. The poor metabolizers would differ than other patients here in the population because they would have non-functioning alleles for the, CY, or for the uh, cytochrome P450 enzymes, whereas extensive or ultra-rapid metabolizers may literally have m multiple copies of these alleles and thus make more enzymes. So the clinical implications for understanding patient genotype and phenotype actually are um, very exciting to consider when we think about maximizing drug response. So to recap here, so far we've talked about um, the fact that drug metabolism is important. We can see changes in metabolism that result from enzyme inhibition or enzyme induction. And these are actions to either inhibit the activity of the enzyme directly or to increase the synthesis of enzyme molecules at the gene level. Furthermore, we saw that genetic polymorphisms or multiple alleles exist for the genes that code for CYP450 enzymes, and this also can create differences in drug metabolism. All of these things are, are um, factors that you may want to take into account as you are treating patients, um, particularly those that may be exposed to multiple drugs.